Most of the elements involved in educational technology is something that most of us are already very familiar of. So for instance, it could be a hardware or the physical components such as the television monitors, language laboratories, various projected media, audiovisual aids, computer keyboard, computers, overhead projectors, slide projectors, video cassette records, tape recorders. So as you can see, most of these things are already very common to most of the educators today. This educational technology could also be in the form or of software or the suitable applications that we use together with the hardware that we mentioned in the previous line. So for instance, we have slides, we have acetate transparencies, we have audio tapes, video recording tapes, programs or applications, and authoring languages. So given those elements of hardware and software that we mentioned in the previous slides, you might ask, what is the relationship between the different aspects of educational technology? So as you can see here, we have the hardware aspects or the technical equipment. We have the software aspects, which are composed of educational materials designed for use with the hardware. And we have the intangible aspects or what we call the underwear. These are the theoretical considerations and findings from appropriate research in range of subjects. So these three actually merge together and where these three areas overlap, that is where technology in education comes in. So technology in education is a possible means to an end with appropriate hardware and software being selected or designed to back up the particular strategy that is decided to adopt in order to achieve a given set of educational aims or objectives. So when we, for instance, decide to use a particular software, hardware, and inject strategies in our teaching and learning environment, that is an example of how these different elements of educational technology help us instill better learning in our students in the classroom. There are many different types of teaching and learning methods. However, it is possible to divide them into three broad groups, namely mass instruction methods, individualized learning methods, and group learning methods. As you can see on this particular slide, these not only differ in terms of the basic mode of instruction, but it also plays both the teacher and the student in radically different roles. Let's take a look at the first one. Mass instruction means conventional lectures and taught lessons, film and video presentations, educational broadcasts, mass practical and studio work. In this case, the role of the teacher is that of the traditional expository role, the controller of all aspects of instruction and process. The role of the students in this case would largely be passive, virtually totally dependent on what they get from the teacher, the video, the demonstrator, and etc. In the case of individualized learning, this means directed study of texts, study of open learning materials, mediated self-instruction, CBL, multimedia assignments, projects, etc. The role of the teacher in this case is also different. He or she is the producer and manager of learning resources, the tutor and guide, providing support to students when required. The role of the students is large, largely responsible for their own learning. The uh, individual students control their own pace of learning, the depth of the study, etc. In the case of group learning, this means bus sessions, class discussions, seminars, group tutorials, games and simulations, project, uh, group projects, and etc. 
The teacher in this case is the organizer of group activity, the facilitator of the learning experience, largely a supported type of role. In this case, the students would largely be responsible for their own learning, but also strongly dependent on one another's preparation and interaction. Alton's model of educational technology shows the elements in mass instruction, individualized instruction and group learning, and how they vary in terms of theoretical basis, model, emphasis and methods, and results. The main idea was that computers could provide individualized learning experiences, including interactive sequences consisting of problems or questions with appropriate feedback. All of these rested upon a sound theoretical basis of behavioral and early cognitive learning theory, and there was ample empirical evidence to show that it worked in terms of student achievement scores or learning outcomes. But of course, there are many ongoing debates of the strengths and weaknesses of those various methods that are discussed in the previous slide. 